friends, ready for another lesson? I'm Sasha and this is Pearl English. We'll start by talking about the future in our grammar component today. Let's talk about the future. The future is a time after now. We use a few different verb forms to refer to the future. Will plus verb. Be plus going to plus verb. The simple present tense and the present continuous tense. The most common verb form to use when referring to the future is the auxiliary will plus a verb in its base form. We use this future form to make predictions or to make simple statements of fact about the future. Here are some sentences to help you out. Malaysia will become an industrialized nation in the year 2020. The sun will rise at 6 in the morning. They will start their trip around the world tomorrow. I will be 15 years old next week. Another common way to talk about what is going to happen is to use this verb form. Be plus going to plus verb. We use this verb form to talk about intentions. An intention is something, basically a plan, that you have already thought about. Here, look at how this verb form functions in sentences. I am going to be a scientist when I grow up. My father is going to buy a new house next month. My parents are going to give me a new mobile phone if I do well in my examination. Be plus going to plus verb can also be used to talk about something in the future that is based on some evidence found at the present time. It looks like this in sentences. I think that it's going to rain this afternoon. Hmm, maybe there are dark clouds in the sky. She is going to bake a cake soon. Maybe you saw her buying flour, butter and eggs. Mr. and Mrs. Tan are going to walk through that door in 10 minutes time. Hmm, maybe you work in a restaurant and it's 12.50pm. And you know that Mr. and Mrs. Tan always walk in at 1pm for lunch and they are never late. The simple present tense can also show future time. It is used for things that are certain or scheduled in the future. This includes time fixed in timetables, calendars and diaries. These are events that we cannot control or decide. Apart from the simple present, the present continuous tense can also be used to mark time in the future. And how do we use it for that purpose, boys and girls? Well, we use it to talk about future plans or arrangements. This arrangement is usually something that you have discussed with somebody else. Let's see how it is used. Watch and listen as some of our friends use the simple present and present continuous tenses in conversation. Hi Tom. Hi. Are you doing anything on Sunday morning? Yes, I am meeting my grandmother at the airport, Tanya. That's great. Anyway, my father's new restaurant opens on Sunday and I wanted to invite you to the opening ceremony at noon. Oh, I don't think I can make it as we are having lunch with my grandma at my uncle's house in Taipei. No worries, you can always drop by when you're free. Okay, I'll see you around. Bye, Tom. Bye and thanks, Tanya. Okay, that was Tanya and Tom using the simple present and present continuous tenses to talk about their future plans. Tanya started off by asking Tom this question and he responded, Hi, Tom. Hi. Are you doing anything on Sunday morning? Yes, I... I'm meeting my grandmother at the airport, Tanya. Tanya's question, Are you doing anything on Sunday morning? is in the present continuous tense. 
She used this chance to ask Tom about his arrangements for Sunday. Tom's response, I'm meeting my grandmother at the airport, was also in the present continuous tense. That's great! Anyway, my father's new restaurant opens on Sunday and I wanted to invite you to the opening ceremony at noon. Oh, I don't think I can make it as you are having lunch with my grandma at my uncle's house in Taipei. Okay, can you figure out the tenses? Well, Tanya used the simple present verb form opens to talk about her father's new restaurant that will open in the near future. And when Tom said, are having lunch, he was using the present continuous tense to refer to another future action. Well, that's how you use the simple present and the present continuous tenses to talk about what you want to do in the future. Keep practicing, okay? A compound noun is a noun that is made up of two or more words. Compound nouns can be written as a single word, as two separate words or with a hyphen. Compound nouns can be made up of these combinations. A noun plus another noun. Bed plus room. Bedroom. An adjective plus a noun. Black plus board. Blackboard. A verb plus a noun. Swimming plus pool. Swimming pool. A noun plus a verb. Sun plus rise. Sunrise. A verb plus a preposition. Check plus in. Check in. Okay, it's poetry time and we're going to look at the setting and message in William Henry Davis's poem called Leisure. But before that, let's recap what a poem is. A poem is a piece of creative writing that communicates emotions and feelings to its readers. Some poems have their own unique rhythm and rhyme. Poems help us paint vibrant pictures in our mind with the help of our senses. They are usually arranged in a series of lines that can be separated into verses or stanzas. Let's listen to a friend reading the poem, Leisure. What is this life, if, full of care, we have no time to stand and stare? No time to stand beneath the bows and stare as long as sheep or cows. No time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. No time to see in broad daylight streams full of stars like stars at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet how they can dance. No time to wait till her mouth can and reach that smile her eyes began. A poor life this if, full of care, we have no time to stand and stay. Okay, let's see what the setting of this poem is. It is obvious that the poet has chosen the countryside as the setting for his poem. This is suggested by the sentences that you heard in the reading of the poem a while ago. They are from verses 2 to 4. Now, let me do a quick vocabulary and meaning check with you. Boughs refer to the branches of trees and there are lots and lots of trees in the countryside. Then, we have sheep and cows. You'll definitely find them in fields in the countryside. And sheep and cows often stand very still and stare into the distance when they are not grazing. They never seem to be in a hurry, like us. Woods, do you know what that means? Yes, it's an area of land where you find trees growing, like a forest, only it's smaller in size. And if you wanted to go to the woods, you would have to go to, that's right, the countryside. And that's where you would be able to see those squirrels that the poet mentions. 
I guess I would not be wrong if I said that most streams can be found in the countryside. And the poet mentions that the streams are full of stars. What do you think he is referring to? Well, I think he is referring to the effect that sunshine creates when it hits crystal clear water. The water seems to sparkle and thus looks like stars. Let's take a quick look at the moral values found in this poem. Moral value number one. We should practice moderation in our everyday lives. We shouldn't be so caught up in our work and daily activities to the point of neglecting rest and leisure. We need to have a balance in order to protect our minds and bodies from getting too stressed out. Moral value number two. We should be grateful for what we have and appreciate the beauty of nature. I guess that it's also logical to send out a warning. We need to protect nature and do everything in our power to save it from destruction or else there will be nothing left to appreciate. Well, that's all the stuff I have for you today. I hope that it has helped you improve your grammar, your vocabulary and your understanding of the poem. So, bye-bye for now!